Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Prep Life. Let's talk about situational awareness. Essay. Simply put, it's paying attention. Now, I talk about it in the book about how it's important in a very complacent society to pay attention. And nearly everything that I look at statistically of people having bad outcomes in the vehicle accident, having the accident period, um, putting themselves in harm's way, not abandoning their house in the middle of a natural disaster when all the signs and indications are there is likely attributed to the lack of paying attention, right? We, we don't often want to pay attention to things, especially as our virtual realities are seemingly more important than our actual realities. So one of the things that I line out is, yeah, sure, situation awareness is important, but how do you bridge that gap? How do you go from not paying attention to paying more attention. Well, it has to be a deliberate process. One of the things I talk about from my military experience is this thing called fives and 25s. Now, I used to think fives and 25s was kind of silly when I was on active duty because I was like, I'm doing that anyway. Like, who's not scanning around for potential threats like improvised explosive devices? Or I just got in an IED, I got hit, my convoy got hit, and who's not scanning for secondary threats? Well, apparently a lot of people. So when we used to say fives and 25s on the radio as an all call, as a standard operating procedure, it was more about turning people's headspace into focusing on potential threats that were in front of them because we're easily distracted. I mean, if you're looking at the ridge line and you're not looking at your feet and you step on the can that initiates a pressure-plated IED, well, that's a problem. So the idea of fives and 25s is deliberately scanning, tuning into our environment from five meters, which is around our feet, around our vehicle, and up and out beyond 25 meters. And I, I would say, especially in today's society, no matter where you are, it's down below and up towards potential threats. Now, what am I looking for when I say, hey, I want you to maintain situational awareness. Well, what, do I, what am I talking about? Well, it's as easy as looking for spikes in the pattern, looking for anomalies in your pattern of life. Let me give you an example. You walk into an IHOP. IHOP's delicious, by the way. You walk into an IHOP, and the host is about to sit you down. And she gives you the option. She's like, hey, wherever you want to sit. And to your right, as you scan from left to right, you heard a disturbance. Now, you would be kind of paranoid if you scan person to person looking for hands and demeanor, which is the way that we look at people that are potential threats. You know, in, in hostage rescue or in direct action, when you go into a room and you see somebody, you're looking at their hands, but you're also looking at their demeanor because the combination of those, you know, it's not called the foot gun, it's called the hand gun because the hands do the damage. The combination of that and their intent that you perceive will give you a great indication if they're friend or foe. So you wouldn't scan person to person. You would scan through the environment looking for the anomaly. And let's say on the right side of the establishment, there's somebody yelling, right? There's a, there's a disturbance in the air, and it happens to be a higher decibel range of voice and tone. Well, if you know that's going on, you might say to the hostess, hey, can you sit us over to the left? right? So again, we're avoiding conflict, but we're not pretending like it doesn't exist, which I think is a profound issue in our society today. You see an issue, you see an accident, you see somebody in distress, and it's like, oh yeah, that's not my problem. Well, it should be your problem. I mean, I got asked on a podcast yesterday about this situation that took place in New York where this Marine put this guy in a headlock. And he did so for an extended period of time, and the guy wound up passing away. Very tragic circumstance, but the guy was trying to be a good Samaritan, a responsible citizen. We should always advocate for that. So if we're just looking for the anomaly, what's next? Right? You see the spike in the pattern. You hear what you think is gunshots. You know, I always use the analogy like you're in Black Rifle Coffee, and you're getting a coffee, and then you hear something outside in the parking lot, and it sounds like gunfire. But you immediately, because of denial, write it off as, oh, that's fireworks, except it's December, 
And it's not near any time or holiday that would justify fireworks. Oh, it must be construction. Except you didn't see any construction sites on the way in. Again, you are writing it off because you're lazy. I mean, most people are lazy. Inherently, we want to look for the out because we are just lazy. And imagine you're in bed and you hear a noise downstairs. Oh, that, that's just uh, something fell off the, ki- the, the kitchen table. Okay, well, what made it fall off the kitchen table? Well, that's no big deal. I'll check it out in the morning. That decision-making, that lazy mindset can set you up for failure. So what you need to put in place of that is realizing action is always appropriate when your spidey senses, you know, the, the five senses you have on top of your spidey sense, your intuition, starts to feel like something's not right. I would rather get away from the situation, get off the X, remove myself with time, distance, and obstacles, and read about it on the headline news, then sit there where curiosity killed the cat, most certainly. So if you hear something, you need to investigate it or go the opposite direction. I'll tell you, if it was me by myself, in most circumstances where I thought there was a potential threat to other people, I would investigate. Because I am a responsible citizen, I'm trained, and I want to help other people that are potentially in distress, even in the worst case scenario, uh, in an active shooting. But if I'm with my family, I'm weighing the priority of taking care of my children who are incapable of taking care of themselves. So that's always important to note. Like, what's the priority? What are you willing to risk? And how are you weighing those risks? So identify the anomaly. Focus in on the anomaly through observation and start looking for demeanor. The last part of situation awareness has to do with how we perceive demeanor. Remember, we are in a very different time and place in our society than we've ever been. I was talking to somebody yesterday about this in conversation, and we were talking about how people now are in fight or flight stuck in traffic. It's like first world problems. Like you can't get your coffee in the morning, so you go bananas. You literally go into a fight or flight. You're smashing the steering wheel. And it's like, man, is this really a problem or are we manufacturing problems? And how complacent are we as a society because we don't have a calibration of what real threats, real issues are in our society? Now, why would that be a factor? Well, because you might be misperceiving body language. And when you misperceive body language, and you're willing to back it up with action, that could get you in trouble. That can get you in trouble. One of the most profound training courses that we run is called personal security. It is force on force. It is scenario based and is the immersion of stress uh, utilizing technical skill sets that we teach. Um, The next course is June 10th in Kalispell, Montana, by the way. You guys can see that link down below. But when I, when I think about this course, I often see people who think they know how they're going to operate under stress. They think they're going to perceive everything perfectly, and then we get in the scenario, and after it's done and they've made a lot of mistakes, they go, man, I never realized that's how it was going to work. So we have to be willing to perceive the threat that's appropriate. Um, perfect example, I'll give you an example of a, a man and woman that I had in a recent class where I had a person trying to interdict the innocent um, woman. And as a man, who especially as a spouse, you want to try to get in between um, the person you love and the potential threat. But the potential threat was just trying to get money. And I said, hey, don't make an egregious ax. Just say, hey, you want money and don't do anything violent. And what ended up happening? Well, the man defended the woman and winded up using deadly force. Well, why is that an issue? Well, profoundly, the guy thought he was in the right. And until I explained the legal ramifications of his actions, and then when I explained to the jury of his peers who were the students, and they all basically voted that all of them perceived it to be a bad shooting, he soon realized, oh man, the perception of what I had and the actions that I took were not proportionate. And that is a huge disconnect, especially in self-defense training. The last thing I'll say about situational awareness is looking is just looking. Observing is conscious and deliberate. Uh, it takes me back to my my military days. When I was a senior E7, a sergeant first class, and I was a sniper, 
I used to teach my guys an observation class. And you're like, what? You used to teach your guys how to observe? Yes, because it's a deliberate protocol. If I told you to look through an optic, right, and you had variable magnification, the ability to zoom in and zoom, zoom out, and I said, look at the hillside, you would just be looking. But if I told you to observe, you would have to scan and not just scan the entirety of your objective lens of what you see, but you would have to break it down in fractions, you know, three by three or six by six or four by four. And then you would take your eyes and scan through each quadrant, each bracket, and then identify anomalies in the pattern. I take it back to hunting most often because I do do some scouting when I'm hunting. When you're hunting and you're scouting, what are you looking for? You're not just looking for animals. You're looking for anomalies. You're looking for patterns or things that are outside of the patterns, which is an anomaly. So I'm looking for foliage displaced. I'm looking for um, droppings from elk or deer. I'm looking for the deer or the elk bedded down behind the foliage that I'm looking at. But I couldn't see that if I was just looking. I have to scan and I have to be very deliberate with my actions. It's the same thing that applies in situational awareness. You cannot just arbitrarily look in your environment and expect to see things that are outside the pattern. I would ask you as a question, your last commute, the last time you drove, if you're listening to this on a podcast, which we're available wherever podcasts are found, or you're watching this on YouTube, when's the last time you drove? And do you remember specific actions and things in that environment when you drove? If I said, hey, along your route, there was a kidnapping of a small child and she was, she was kidnapped out of a red car. Would you be able to recall that? Well, likely not because you were multitasking or simply you weren't paying attention. So the act of maintaining situational awareness is ultimately uh, based on your ability to pay attention and to retain and sustain that attention for as long as needed. So these things are going to get you ahead of that worst case scenario. They're not going to put you on the reactive side of something that's offensively happening to you. And it is the mitigator. It's the best thing that you could do to avoid the worst case scenario. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. It's something I want to do every once in a while on Prep Life. We talk about the news. We talk about things that are going on in the world. But I also want to give you the, those pro tips that are specific to things that we talk about and communicate about. And it's important to have the extraction and talking down into the weeds of these things because they're important. The more you know. It's like uh, that G.I. Joe uh, phrase, like knowing's half the battle. I can't believe I just did that with my arm. It's kind of dorky. Can we get like that logo, knowing's half the battle? We'll probably get sued for that. Anyways, don't do that. I want to say a big shout out to my patrons. My patrons on my Patreon. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. Of course, you will find the underground on patreon.com forward slash Mike Glover. You can get access to that for all Patreon members in the link down below. And for tier one members and tier two members, special content that I do in all things preparedness. Until next time, peace out, guys.